What's up, Amazon sellers? Did you know you can have more than one Amazon selling account per marketplace? Well, the answer is yes, but you need to be very careful about how you do it. Get it right and you have no problems. Get it wrong and you could lose everything. Stay tuned. I'm going to talk about how I operate them within my businesses now that I've got four of them and some other little ways how Amazon detects multiple accounts. Stay tuned. Right, if you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Parkinson. I've been selling on Amazon now for the last five years. In the UK, I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller. Check this out. And in the USA, I'm a six-figure Amazon seller. Check this out. But hopefully in the near future, I'll expand into another marketplace. And if you want to learn about what I'm doing and obviously keep up to date, do make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. But hey, enough about me. What are we going to go through today? Well, first things first, number one, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information. Number two, I'm going to talk about the rules behind multiple accounts. Number three, I'll talk about what you you need to be careful of with multiple accounts. Number four, I'll talk about should you merge accounts or not. Number five, I'll talk about how I operate multiple accounts and the structure of it. Number six, I'll talk about how to hide separate logins with multiple accounts and not a black hat way, but very legitimate and how I do that as well. And then also number seven, I'll talk about ways Amazon detects multiple accounts, just so you're aware of them and the reasons why we want to know. So let's get started. First things first, let's give you a little bit of background information. From my side, I currently run four Amazon selling accounts. Only two of them actually sell anything, but I do have four active selling accounts. And what I want to talk through now is everything that I've learned about creating these accounts, also doing the research behind them, how I did it, and also what I think you need to know if you are thinking about making multiple accounts. To be clear, I just want to be very clear with everyone watching this video. I'm only going to talk about legal, legit ways which are in compliance with Amazon's terms of service. Now, now, I know there are going to be ways which are like black hat style. That is not something that I'm going to talk about here or even discuss or that I even know about. What I'm going to talk about is legitimate reasons why you need them and how to do it and some other little tips and tricks that I do which kind of help out and you'll understand why. So it leads me nicely on to the rules behind multiple counts. What I want to do is I'll just show you an overview now of the, what Amazon states as part of its selling policies. Now, Amazon state very clearly in there not to operate more than one account on Amazon without a legitimate business need. And I stress the legitimate business need. Now, having said that, Amazon do recommend that you only have a second Amazon selling account if you have a legitimate business need and all of your current accounts are in good standing. But examples of a legitimate business need are one, owning multiple brands and maintaining separate businesses for each. For example, a parent company has multiple brands and wants to have a separate storefront name for each one. Number two, manufacturing products for two uh, distinct and separate companies. Number three, we are recruited for Amazon's program that requires a separate account. So be aware of that. Now, the one thing which I kind of done in my research and understand is about legitimate business need. Well, we kind of talked about it earlier on in regards to, if we say, owning multiple brands and maintaining a separate business. Well, look, if you have, if we say, two private label brands, I don't know, call it Tom's products and Fast Track FBA products, and they're two separate companies, and I'm the owner of the company, well, I can have two brands or two seller accounts. Why? Number one, they're two companies, so that's fine. But also, number two, even if I had one company and they were selling two brands, then I think it'd be legitimate to say that I can have now two selling accounts, one one for one brand, one for the other one. A general rule of thumb that I'd always kind of consider is that one thing you want to be careful of is about price fixing. And if you have two accounts which are selling the same ASIN or even the same brand, then it could be considered that you're using two accounts to manipulate the price. And that obviously is against terms of service. So my general kind of rule of thumb that I think about personally is if they're separate businesses, yes, of course you can have them. But even if they're separate businesses, they should never sell the same brands, never sell the same ASINs. Even if you've got the same business and you want to have two storefronts, maybe you might be thinking one for wholesale, one for arbitrage. Doesn't work. Why? Because it's very likely you're going to sell the same ASINs. That doesn't work. But you have a wholesale business and maybe a private label brand and the private and they'll never sell the same brands or never sell the same ASINs. And I think that would be okay. Again, I'm not perfect. This is my understanding of it. But generally speaking, you should never have two businesses that you're owner of, even if they're separate, should never be selling the same brands or same product. For example, with me, we are currently not selling using our UK business into Europe. Why? Because in the future, we are looking to open up another business in Europe, which will sell in Germany. And I don't ever want Amazon to be able to accuse me of even 
distinctly near through a bot, being able to say that I've been selling the same brand, even if it's not the same ASIN. So we're just not selling on Europe at all. This leads me nicely on to what do you need to be careful of with multiple accounts? Now look, ideally in an ideal world, you'd want the following to be different with different accounts. And this is just a list, it's not perfect, but keep this in mind. You really want different, you know, if you are gonna have multiple accounts in an ideal world, this is the setup you want. Separate business entities with different owners, not always perfect, but I've got multiple businesses with the same owner, i.e. me. Ideally, you wanna operate from two you know, separate IP addresses. You need separate payment cards, separate email addresses, separate telephone numbers. I Ideally, physical addresses separately. I don't, but just be mindful of that. You want different points of contact for them, different tax numbers, most definitely because they're different businesses. You ideally want different management and different employees, but actually I've still got VAs who are secondary users across three of the four accounts, um, separate domains for your web hosting and different warehouses, definitely separate products. They should never be selling the same products. And ideally you want no crossover between the two. You know, just coming back to that, in my experience, we have the same owner, we do have the same business address, we use different warehouses, but we do have same employees across them, the secondary users, which Amazon might see. So, and we've not had any problems, but I would say that one account is selling and the other account is not. To be clear, you know, and I think some of my VAs, they are linked to other accounts, but obviously they're not always selling. So just be mindful of that. Now, the next point I come across is there is an option should you merge your accounts. Now, Amazon gives you the option of merging, i.e. if you have two, one or more Amazon seller accounts, you can merge them together into one seller central login and just flick between them. Now, Amazon seems to recommend this because, hey, it's easy to do. And also as well, they're going to reduce your monthly subscription payment. So you're only going to pay one monthly selling subscription for all your merged accounts. But personally, I wouldn't do this. If you know anything about Amazon, Amazon has been seen because they use bots to quite simply do what's known as suspend first, ask questions later. Now, there is a big issue right now that, especially going around, that you could have what's known as linked accounts, i.e. like my USA selling account, the Canadian part of it has been linked to another account which I have nothing to do with. Well, quite simply, what happened? Well, the bots have said, we're suspending your account, you're not able to get money out, and you're not able to get your stock out until you've got 90 days, until you overturn it. Now, I don't know how long this process would take, but luckily enough, I have no stock in there. But what I do understand is that they suspended that. If I were to merge my accounts, what would happen perhaps maybe one day, they suspend my Canada account and then suspends my US account. And because my US account is linked with my UK account, now my UK gets count. And all of a sudden, everything gets suspended by a bot going in some weird thing. Now, for me, I don't want that. I want to make sure they're separate and we try and keep them as separate as possible so that the bots don't automatically just start banning everything automatically. Now, if you ever sell on Amazon, you've been selling for a while, what you do understand is you only really have one customer, which is a huge risk. And by creating more than one account, you are kind of helping to mitigate that risk by now having two accounts with one customer. And ideally they shouldn't get, if you say, if one gets banned, the other one doesn't. As long as you know, it'd be accidentally banned, not you're doing something wrong. That I understand. Now, hence why I'm keeping them separated and I'm not merging them together because, hey, we never know, there might be an update in future and Amazon could ban the whole lot of them because they are merged. It's certainly something that I don't want to do and I want to mitigate and decrease the risk of only having one customer. Now, this leads me nicely onto how I operate multiple accounts. So let me explain my setup with myself right now, personally, so I can explain that for you. So I've got three companies, three limited companies, Fast Track FBA Limited, my Amazon UK Limited and my Amazon USA LLC. Now, in addition to this, I have my own personal name as a sole trader. I'm a taxpayer and I'm a sole trader in the UK. So quite simply, I created four accounts under all four entities, three companies and one sole trader. Now, for me, in my business, why do I do this? Well, quite simply, we have an account in the USA to sell in the US. We have an account in the UK to sell in the US. They actually trade. We also have another account in the UK, which is for being my lead service. We didn't want to give all my leads VAs access to my, my Amazon. Amazon account. And then also we have another account in the UK, which we use for software development, which you do need a developer license for. And I wanted to separate that from my trading business. Why? Because, hey, I don't know. Once if my trading business gets suspended, the last thing I want is the software dev side to be suspended as well. So hence why we created another account. Now, let's be clear. I have used the same password for all four of these, to say, accounts. They, Amazon knows that. I'm not naive to that. That's something to be aware of. And also as well, two of them were created since the introduction of video interviews when you first create an account. But the other two didn't have a video interview, but they all have my passport on them, which Amazon will know about. Now, you might be thinking that's nothing new. So let me share with some other thoughts with you about, to say, things that I've learned and things that I do around 
around running multiple accounts to try and stop the bots from linking them and also shutting them down. So I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so today I'm talking about building my businesses and you know, risk diversification. That was one of the real things. And my God, there's so much opportunity out there. I've done 3 million in the UK and we've done over half a million now in the last 12 months in the USA. And the one thing which I'll say is if you are interested about maybe thinking about creating another account, I definitely create it under another limited company it just or LLC, it just makes such a difference. And if you are thinking about maybe another marketplace, definitely recommend the USA. Why? Because we're just seeing double the margins we're getting out of the UK. It's game changing. Now, if you want to learn how to get started selling in the USA and creating the LLC, creating the tax, getting the right prep center, getting the accountants, everything that I've learned that I know, well, I documented the entire journey over the six months it took me to do, all the processes that I need and recommendations for you and how to do it faster and cheaper as well. And I put it together in a small course, which I'll put a link down below called the Fast Track FBA Getting Started Course. Check it out. I think you'll love it. It's a super simple £97. And you can even book in a free 30 minute consultation call to see if the course is going to be right for you. Have a look at the link down below. Now, this leads me nicely onto how to hide separate logins with multiple accounts. Now, I've got to just be careful. Like, I'm not really saying that like, you're hiding. Amazon's not naive. Like, they know my password. Like, they know it's me. But what I'm really trying to do is not hide from Amazon. I'm trying to hide from Amazon's bots by not linking accounts. So for me personally, what do I do? Well, quite simply, I use what's known as remote virtual computers. Now, this is quite simply another computer that is running in a data center somewhere in the world that I've set up a computer running with Windows. I then log into that computer from my laptop and I control the mouse and the keyboard, which you know, from my computer, I control the mouse and keyboard, then controls the mouse and keyboard on the remote computer, which then talks to the internet. Now, Amazon's computers only see that remote computer. They don't see my computer right here. And because I can dial into the four different remote PCs, what does that mean? Well, it means that Amazon's only seeing the four different remote PCs and not the computer controlling it. And hopefully it's not linking them. Now, the service I use, if anyone is interested, which is quite interesting and ironic, is a service called Amazon Light Sale. I'm just running a computer with a web browser on it. That's it. It does not run the fastest in the world because I'm having an internet lag, but it does obviously give me that protection. Now, the one thing which I will say is I have a lot of VAs doing the actual work. I don't really need to log in much. So if you are having like one main computer then or one main business, you might want to keep that on your main computer and then separate accounts on remote PCs just for the, the lag, the latency behind it. That's a top tip. Now, another option you can use if you don't want to use Amazon Light Sale, because it can be quite complex to set up, is um, Mirage ID. Now, I met these guys at a recent event I went to, and they understand this problem about linked accounts as a real problem. And they built a web browser, which basically does what I do, but on your computer, it creates whole new, should we say, Chrome logins, it creates new IP addresses, everything. So Amazon just doesn't see it. And it's something to be mindful of. So that is another option you can check out, costs a bit more, but it is good. Now, this leads me nicely onto ways Amazon can detect multiple accounts. And I think for you, just to be really careful, to be mindful is like coming back to my conversation, they have the same password. They know it's me if they really wanted to search for it, but I'm really trying to protect myself against bots and in particular automatic suspensions, which I then have to fight rather than, you know, if I do something wrong, then okay, fine, definitely ban me. I understand that. But all my stuff is legit within Amazon's terms of service. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you a website and I'll load it up now and it's called coveryourtracks.com ef.org and this kind of shows you that whenever you go to a web page what does the website see from you so let's go down to the website now and have a quick look at that okay so here we are on cover your tracks and i like this and i think this is going to scare you when you understand how much they can do so i'm going to click here test your browser and what it's going to do is it's going to basically go through and just do lots of tests on my browser. And then it's going to show me what it can tell me about my computer and my browser from these tests. Now, what's really interesting is Amazon pretty much does all of these as well, and it keeps this data behind the scenes. So maybe you're not logged into Amazon Seller Central account, but just by using the same browser on the same computer, they can really tell so much. So let's kind of go through. So you are, it says here, our tests indicate you are not protected against traffic, fine. And you say your browser has a unique fingerprint. If I kind of scroll down, you know, it says here, look, your browser fingerprint, which is like the way to identify us, appears to be unique amongst the 215,000 tests in the last 45 days. If I came back again, they can find that my browser has already been like, they'll say that's Tom again, like we've seen again, even if I'm not logged in to the Amazon web store, for example, obviously this isn't Amazon. So let's kind of have a quick look to see what they got. So like Heather's user agent, it tells me my Chrome version, what I'm running, it tells you all about it. Also as well, they can see what plugins I've got. So like all my Chrome extensions, and they tell you here how it works. My time offset, they know that I'm in Mexico City. There you go, Mexico City. They know my screen size, my color depth. 
all the fonts, you know, unique fonts installed on my system, cookies, uh, limited time cookies, hashtag a canvas fingerprint, you know, there is a lot going on here. And as a result, even if I'm logged into Amazon or log out into another account, it doesn't matter if I'm logged in or not, Amazon can still detect just from my browser that it's me again, regardless of whether I log into the account. So that's something really interesting. And I think you've got to be mindful of it. The one thing you might think about, and I thought about this as well, is you know once they kind of get this browser fingerprint, they can link the browser fring to the IP address. And maybe I go use another IP and a different browser, well, now they know that potentially those two are linked. Now, in addition to this, I wanna show you something else in an Amazon email, which if you don't know about, is something you should be aware of. Now, the reason why I'm about to tell you this is because if you understand the way my setup is done, is I have four remote PCs pretty much, but they all come back to email addresses. Now, Amazon sends us emails through those email addresses. So let me just show you something on an Amazon email. Okay, so here I am in just a, a, a nice general email that Amazon sent me. Remember, I've got four accounts with four different email addresses. So Amazon are probably gonna send this same email to all four because you know they want us to let us know about how we can sell on Amazon. But the one thing I want you to really understand is there are images in this email. Now, if I right mouse click and click inspect, we can go into that image. Now, most images are like, you know, image.jpg, but with Amazon, they do some other stuff. You can see down here, and I'm just gonna hide some stuff here. Now this image right here, Amazon has got, it says SRC, which is the location of the image. What does it have? Well, this is the actual, she say, URL that the web browser is bringing up. So what can we see? Well, here it says, we've got Amazon newsletter, and it's got some information in there, like information codes, like hero compliance, but it's bringing in SOC 2113. But you can see, I don't know if you can see it down the bottom, but it's creating content and they put tracking codes in there. Now, it might be that there's a one tracking code for one account, there's another tracking code for another account, another tracking code for another account. Every account will have a tracking code with the emails. And when that email gets opened, Amazon's gonna associate that IP address with that tracking code from that image. And then what it's gonna do is notice that there are four other images which have been loaded from the same account. And the more you keep doing this, the more you are gonna get associated, those accounts are gonna build stronger connections. Why? Because every email that goes to those four accounts, for example, is gonna be open from the same IP address all the time. And Amazon's gonna know, even if you have remote PCs, just by opening their emails, you are now going to be linking those accounts. So be careful. Now, this leads me nicely to my final thoughts. Let's not be stupid. Even with all the Mirage IDs, Amazon light sales, remote computers, different emails, even opening up emails on different computers and having different addresses and everything else, it really doesn't matter. Why? Because I do have the same password across all accounts. If Amazon wanted to shut me down, they could definitely do it. But that isn't the goal. That's not the goal of what I'm trying to achieve here. What I am trying to achieve here is that the auto bots don't shut me down so i'm if i do get accidentally affected by one account the other ones don't that's the whole reason why i do these measures now the other thing which i will really say and just reiterate it is none of the measures that i'm taking are against terms of service but also in addition to that is that i will never do anything which is against terms of service i really like my account and i like selling and also i never recommend that you do either even if you are taking these measures so just be mindful now what i will say is if you've liked this video and you are looking to create a new account then obviously you're going to have to go through seller verification again maybe if you haven't done it and you want to know what to think about what you what it's like do watch the video around here called amazon seller identity verification top tips that's after i've done it a few times now hopefully you've liked this video if you have give me a big thumbs up and hey if you want to see more videos like this hit the subscribe button down below but for myself thomas parkinson and fast trick fba thank you very much